Hey, PSAT students. So we had lesson four of our <clears throat> unit three on well-designed surveys and experiments. So that's what we're going to talk about today. In class, we looked at what a well-designed experiment is going to look like. And so we, I'm presenting right now some of the summary items we talked about. Remember, in a well-designed experiment, you have to have comparison at the end of your experiment. So in order to do that, we need to make sure we have random assignment into treatment groups. So all the subjects who signed up for the experiment are randomly signed into treatment groups. You have to have control of some sort. Maybe you have a control group. Maybe you block. Um, and then you may have to have replication. You need to make sure you have enough experimental units in each of your treatment groups. Okay. So then we started to look at designing an experiment. And we looked at this SAT problem where we had 50 students and a completely randomized design might look like this, where we just take the 50 students and we randomly assign them to two different treatment groups. If you were writing up an FRQ and you, you were asked to create a completely randomized design, you would need a little more detail than what I've presented. You would have to talk about how you're going to randomize these 50 students into their two groups, right? So I might want to add a detail by saying I write all 50 students' names on a hat. The first 25 selected get assigned to group one, but that is a detail you need on the AP exam on a free response question. You also need to pay attention to the detail that the groups have an even number of students in them, 25 in each. So if you're asked to do a completely randomized design, this flow map is a great start, but you need more detail. You need to elaborate on your randomization. You need to elaborate on your comparison and how they're getting into each treatment group. We took this a step further in class by thinking about the grade level the students were in. And so now on your screen, you see how we could block by the grade level, 20 seniors, 30 juniors, and then I do the random assignment. Remember, blocking is a way to help control a possible confounding variable, such as grade level in this instance. But notice, I still have comparison. I still have randomization. I have control, and I have replication in all of my treatment groups. You have to have those things in a well-designed experiment. And then the last thing we talked about in class today was the inference you can make. So say you've done this well-designed experiment. How do you know what conclusions you can draw? So we're going to start with the left here. First of all, for your experiment or even for your survey, were individuals randomly selected? Did they volunteer or are they randomly selected? If individuals were randomly selected, then you can make inference about the bigger population. Okay, I can draw conclusions about a bigger population if I randomly selected the individuals from that bigger population. Here, if individuals were randomly assigned to their treatment groups, if individuals were randomly assigned to treatment groups, then I can also use that word causation. We've been so careful to not use causation unless we're talking about a well-designed experiment. So if you are randomly assigning your experimental units to their treatment groups, then you'll be able to make a cause and effect conclusion. This summary here that you're looking at on your screen comes from page 304 of your textbook. Let me know if you have any other questions over well-designed surveys and the inference you can make. I hope this helped. Have a good one.